Welcome Woodblock Print collectors and enthusiasts. Today I'm going to be tackling a question that many people who have a woodblock print or are thinking of purchasing a woodblock print ask. And that is, how much is this woodblock print worth? And for my examples in this video, I'm going to be using prints from the 1800s, but the advice applies to more modern artists as well. So first, the basics. Let's make sure you have a woodblock print. If you look at the surface of the print up close, you may need a magnifying glass for this. Do you see dots? If you see dots, that means your print is the product of the modern offset printing process, and it's not a woodblock print. You don't need to watch the rest of this video, and you can go and make yourself a margarita. Look at the back of the print. Do you see ink bleed through? And this is when the ink from the front of the print will be visible on the back of the print. Uh, as you can see in these examples here, the red, the purple, and some of these other colors are bleeding through from the front. This is an indicator of the woodblock print process. Also, hold the paper up to a light source. Does the paper look handmade? And importantly, can you see these like thin grid lines on the paper? This is a result of the drying process, and it indicates that you probably have a real woodblock print. Now that we've got that figured out, I'm going to take you through the five major factors that will help determine the value of your print. Those five factors are print quality, artist popularity, print edition, popular or not, and trending. Factor number one, print quality. So first, look at the black lines on the print. Are they sharp and solid like this version here? Or are they broken and uneven like this version over here? Uh, broken lines and gaps are due to the actual wearing down of the woodblock itself. And it's less desirable than having crisp, clear lines. Are the colors of the print vibrant? Have a look at this uh, close-up of a Kunisada print behind me. Uh, one side has obviously been damaged by the sun, the paper isn't as bright, and the colors are faded, where the other much less so. Also, have a look at this uh, Hirokage print. You can see this version, which has been very damaged by the sun, compared to this one that hasn't. Are there mold stains on the print? These are almost impossible to remove. How about ink bleed? And this means that certain colors of ink um, would bleed if they got too moist or wet. And uh, as we can see in these examples. What about dirt, stains, and overall wear? Look at the examples of these prints here. You can see along the edges where people's fingers have been touching them over the, over the years, uh, how damaged these prints got. Has the print been eaten by insects? Usually the Japanese death watch beetle. Has the print been trimmed? Um, many times the owner would cut the edges or the borders off of the uh, print in order to fit the print into a smaller album. Uh, so we can see in this example, the print at the top has not only been damaged by the sun, but the borders have been trimmed off completely whereas the one below it is in much better condition and it has full borders all the way around. Has the print been glued or backed onto paper? Uh, usually the owner would glue the print into an album or onto a screen. And this glue obviously damages the value of the print. And our final quality issue is if the print has been wrinkled or folded, as in these examples. So I, I know that's a lot of things to think about under uh, print quality, but if you're collecting prints that are average 150 years old, you're going to run into some of the quality issues that I listed. That being said, the more quality issues there are with your print, the lower the value. Uh, and unfortunately, there's no official scoring or grading method for Japanese woodblock prints like there is for baseball cards, stamps, coins, and other collectibles. All right, 
Let's move on to number two, artist reputation or fame. If you don't know who the artist of your print is already, you could go onto a website like ukiyoe.org, which is an amazing site, upload a photo of your print and see if you get a match. Another option is to use one of the Facebook groups that specializes in woodblock prints and see if one of their members can help identify the artist. Basically, the more famous and popular the artist is, the higher the potential value is of your print. Factor number three, edition. Is it a reprint or an original? Even a fantastic looking reprint is not worth as much as an original. Uh, let's look at these examples. Here we have Hoax Size The Great Wave. The version at the top is a really nice reprint that you could probably find for $75. The one below that is an original that sold for over $1 million. Uh, this example is Yoshitoshi from his series 100 Aspects of the Moon. The one closest to me is a reprint that you could find for about $200. And the further one is an original, which is about $2,000. One important way to tell whether your print is an original or a reprint is to identify the publisher. And publisher marks were these small, usually round marks that were on the body of the print or on the side of the print, as in these examples. And back in the day, what would happen is a publisher would commission an artist to produce a design for a print. He then would print probably 2,000 of those to see if they sold, if the print was popular or not. If the print was popular, they would continue printing um, until the woodblocks wore out. Uh, they could also potentially resell the woodblocks to another publisher. And that publisher would put their own stamp on it and continue printing, and that could be 10 years later, 30 years later, 50 years later, 100 years later. So it's important to uh, look for those publisher marks and those will tell you whether the print is an original or a reprint. Here is an example of the same print with four different publisher marks. Knowing who the publisher was will help us identify if the print is an original or a reprint. Factor number four, is it from a popular series? You could have a print from a, a famous artist that's in excellent condition, but if it's not from one of their more popular series, the value isn't going to be as high. For example, here we have uh, prints from Yoshitoshi, one from his New Forms of 36 Ghosts and one from his Famous Generals of Japan. Uh, the Ghosts print is much more popular and therefore the value much higher. And finally, factor number five, is it trending today? Tattoo prints, for example, are a subject that is in high demand since tattoos are so popular today. Also, prints that have bloody or supernatural themes are fetching a higher price than many others. As you can see, there are many factors to think about when evaluating the value of a print. So where can you go online that will help you get closer to the actual value? If you know the name of the artist and the title of the print, you can search for it online. Probably there is an auction house or a gallery that has a similar print uh, for sale. You can also contact the galleries and auction houses directly and see if they'll give you an appraisal of the print's value. One of the best online resources for print value is Mutual Art. They maintain a database of thousands and thousands of prints, along with the sales data over time. So you can see how the value of a particular print or artist is trending. But you need to get a subscription in order to use that service. In the end, the ultimate value is what the print means to you, the owner. So definitely keep that in mind and happy collecting.